Hi everybody. How are you today? I wanted to come back at you today. <laughs> Here come my kids the minute I talk. And I wanted to do a video, another video in my series. And this one is going to be the good and bad for me. <coughs> After surgery. Sorry. Molly didn't want them at me apparently. Molly, get down off of her. Hi Gunner. So before I start this video, I want to tell you that my experience may not be your experience. So I'm not saying this is the norm. I'm not saying this is the majority. I'm saying this is me. And I just want to share with you my experiences, good and bad, post-op. So let me start with the bad. The first and biggest bad thing I could say is that I did not have surgery sooner. <laughs> what are you doing, Dixie Doo? That I didn't have surgery sooner. I really wish I wouldn't have waited. it. But on the flip side of that coin, I also was not ready until I did actually have the surgery. So I guess it's good in hindsight that I did wait. It's just I could have lived and enjoyed life a lot more, a lot sooner, not more sooner. Nice grammar there. A lot sooner than I did had I had surgery prior to when I did. So that would be a bad, but it's not a terrible. I mean, again, maybe I just wasn't ready. Another bad thing is because of weight gain um, and the tendency of these medications, I cannot get on a proper mood stabilizer for my bipolar. Now, I have gonna. I have tried one that was supposed to um, help you actually lose weight, but what happened was, I said in a previous video, it actually gave me the heebie-jeebies, and um, I couldn't take it. So, I'm only on a, a medication that's Effexor, which is for depression, but my bipolar 2 luckily isn't bad, and I do manage it pretty well. So I'd say that's a bad because things could be a lot better. I mean, I, I don't have the energy I should. I don't have the motivation I should. Um, sorry, guys. Sometimes I sleep a lot. Sometimes I don't sleep for days. I mean, things like that could really change. But it is what it is. But I would categorize that as a bad after surgery because you just can't take any medications because they a lot of medications make you gain weight that's counterproductive and not good for my health therefore not happening another bad is the stomach noises last night it was crazy town in my stomach if I could have recorded it I mean you could have sat in one end of my house and probably heard it in the other end it was that loud it was insanity. I, ca I was sitting here like, God, shut up so I could hear myself think. <laughs> it was just crazy. And I'll be four years out and it still is just nuts. I don't know why. I don't know what. But your belly is going to have some serious talking time with you. And I call her Grabble Gertie. I've, I haven't called her that in a long time. But my mom way back when I was little used to call me Grabble Gertie because my mouth would go like a duck's butt. And I guess because sometimes my pouch goes like a duck's butt is why I named her Gravel Gertie, Gertie for short. So if you ever hear me refer to Gertie, you know I'm talking about the pouch. <laughs> I don't do it often, but last night I was like, oh, Gertie, shut up. Another thing is, and I'm just going to say it like it is, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but I'm going to be politically, as politically correct as I can. Your number two is going to make you want to wear a hazard mask or whatever they're called. It is not pleasant. It literally some days, I don't know, it smells like somebody died. And then, of course, you get the gas. For me, I had gas so bad, I didn't even want to be around my own husband. I would just sit and hold it because I'm one of those that was taught you don't just let it rip. And I still to this day I'm 47. If if my husband heard me do that, unless I'm in the restroom, the bathroom. We have a bathroom, not a restroom. If Unless I'm in the bathroom and my husband heard me do that, I would be mortified. 
he don't care. I do. Just the way I was raised. So for me, having that gas that I didn't even want to be around my own husband because I'd sit here in so much pain till he went to bed or I'd have to keep running to the bathroom or outside. I mean, the gas was unreal. So I'm saying this because I reached out and I'm like, please, somebody tell me what to do about this gas. I never in my life felt such pain and misery. It was just horrendous. And somebody said, you need a probiotic. Thank God for that somebody because once I got myself in a probiotic, that situation changed completely. Not saying I don't get gas, but I barely have gas. I mean, to the point where I can't tell you the last time. I mean, it's just like normal before surgery. So for me, those would be the bad. Um, I'm not going to pause this. My kids need out. I'm just going to let them potty and I'll be right back. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Come on. Okay, so now I'm going to get to the good. There's so many good. I mean, so many good. I'm going to start with the comorbidities and the medications are gone. I went from 17 meds down to four. One of them is for kidney stones, one's for bipolar, one's for migraines I get, and the other one is for um, my bowels. Because after surgery, I just, I couldn't go anywhere or do anything. I had to keep running to the restroom. And I mean, I didn't have time to even think about it. Uh, let's just say I was like Al Roker. I didn't go to that degree. I didn't have a mess in my pants. But I could have if I would have left the house. And I called my surgeon. I'm like, oh my God, I can't even come to my appointment. I said, I am just, it's not stopping. So he said, well, let me prescribe something for you. And he got me cholestopol, which is generic for cholested. And I don't really know what it is, but it's like a one gram pill. And I'm supposed to take eight a day, but I, t I knocked it down to six a day. I take three in the morning, three at night. And when I tell, and I also have to take Miralax to help me not be constipated. It's crazy. But I also had irritable bowel prior to, I had that since I was like 18 years old. So that might be part of it. But if I don't take the cholesterol, whew, I'm in that bathroom and I'm not coming out. So to go from 17 medications, diabetic meds, blood pressure meds, I had meds at the kazoo. I was a walking pharmacy. It was actually disgusting. Down to the few I take, that's, I'm going to call that more than good. That's flipping amazing. And, of course, I don't have the comorbidities. I no longer have the diabetes, the high blood pressure, the edema, the acid reflux. All that's gone. There's more that's gone. You know, you forget after so long. And I'm glad because it's a memory I don't need to have. But I had a lot of comorbidities. I think I had five or six comorbidities that I no longer have. So that's pretty amazing. Um, the way you see and see yourself and feel about yourself totally changes for the good. At least it did for me. I mean, even the first 10 pounds, the way I looked at myself was completely different. I started to be prideful. I went from not caring and keeping my head down whenever I had to go out, which is far and few in between, to back to that big smile on my face that I always used to have. Ever since I was a child, I was told I had such a pretty smile because I always was smiling. And luckily I do have nice teeth, so that helped a lot. But I mean, I, I didn't, I mean, my head was down and I just, I didn't want to be seen. I didn't, I didn't want attention drawn to myself and I lost some weight and I started doing more than just walking out the door. I would care about what I look like rather than a big frumpy sweater to hide everything. I would wear a sweater, but I would leave it open. I started to wear a little bit of makeup. I started to wear a little bit of jewelry. I started at that first 10 pounds. I felt completely different about myself and I got excited about going clothing shopping. And I remember before my mom used to buy my stuff. I didn't even know 
what size bra I wore, to be honest with you. Most times I wouldn't even wear a bra because I didn't leave the house. And um, I just, I didn't want to know. And a lot of stuff I got was like, I got a lot of 4 and 5X because the bigger it was, the more covered I felt. Um, I probably, in hindsight, wore a 3, 4X. I was 298 pounds at my highest. But I started to not cover my body. I started to want to be out and about. I started to care what I look like, and I started to get excited about looking at clothing. And, of course, this might be considered a bad. I have so much clothing. I could probably wear an outfit every day and not run out of clothes for a good year. I'm willing to bank on that. Um, it gets overwhelming at times. I'll go back in my closet, and instead of back in the day when I used to put something on and go, oh my God, I look like a fat cow in this. I feel like I'm bulging and bloated everywhere, and I'm not gonna wear this. So you can see this roll, that roll, and bling, 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 there's a pile of clothes on the floor because I'm upset that I can't wear anything. Now it's like, oh, I want to wear this, but maybe I want to wear this. And then, of course, I have tons of jewelry, my paparazzi I'm addicted to. And then I'll go, well, I like this necklace. I want to wear this today. Oh, but that don't go with this. And sometimes it's just mind-blowing. I actually overwhelm myself with the amount of stuff I have. So maybe we could chalk the tons of clothing into the bag category because you then overwhelm yourself. But it's also a good thing because... I want to buy clothing and the fact that I can go in a store I still have to check myself that I'm shopping in the junior sizes and the missus sizes instead of plus sizes I mean there's lots of times I just got a sweater at Kohl's and it's a medium and it's big on me they didn't have a small it was clearance and I loved it it was just a plain black one and one like it was in the regular not clearance and it was like $28 so I'll buy the one that's a little bigger for 17 and you could keep the one that's a little smaller for 26 worst case scenario I lose my weight after my revision and it gets passed on to my mom no big deal but for now I have a nice black sweater that fits me and I love another good thing is um I can order online and not you know before I couldn't order online because I didn't know my size or nothing. Now I order online all the time. Excuse me, I get a drink. By the way, this is my same Powerade from my video yesterday. And also, excuse me, I'm going to get the babies in. Be right back. He's ready. Benny, where are you at, bud? Come on, Grace. Get in. Gracie. Come on. In. Come on. Oh, oh. oh, I know. It's too hot to lay out there. Good girl. Alright, let's take a nap now, guys. Easy gun gun. Easy gun gun. Alright. Um, and of course, being able to just, you know, I see clothes all the time and I get the best deals. That's why I have so much clothes. But I'm done buying clothes for quite a while. I just got as I put on, I got a small Maurice's and well, my pink haul wasn't small, but I'm done buying clothes for a while. Although, I went into Target and oh my lord, they have beautiful clothes. Good thing I didn't have a Target credit card. I think I would have went a little cray cray. That's why I can't have credit cards. And also, uh, I didn't have the extra money, but I did get that sweater because I was chilly that day and I needed something because I didn't have a sweater with me. Normally I have one, but I didn't. So, that could be a good or a bad. I call it a good because I love my clothes. But All right. Another thing is not being ashamed anymore in public. Um, I'm no longer ashamed. Like I said, I used to keep my head down. I no longer keep my head down. My head is held high. I walk with pride. I walk with confidence. I look people in the eye. I speak with pride. I speak with confidence. And I, you know, my Donna from Donna's Happy Place, she had mentioned, don't be a bariatric Becky. And I will say, Donna, 
in the aspect, not that I, I go on and on and on about my surgery, but I'm proud of my surgery. And there have been many occasions where conversation to strangers has led, whether it be in a restaurant or in a store or whatever, to my bariatric surgery coming up. And I say to them right out, if you're not interested, that's fine. And they're like, no, no, tell us. I mean, I do try and respect and not hang, you know, hold on to people. And when they're desperate to get away from me, I, I would not, I mean, I'm not clueless. I know when people, I read people very well. I know when they're agitated or engaged. Um, but I, I, as many chances as I get, I'm the first one to talk to anybody about bariatric surgery. And my thing with that is, you don't know whose life you can change. Had I met somebody two years before I finally hit my rock bottom and went in for surgery, had I met somebody like me that is so excited and so grateful and so blessed and just happy that they did this surgery, I might have looked into it sooner. I might have agreed to it sooner. I might have had a lot less misery in my life. Um, you just don't know. So... The positive is, in this, the good thing is that not only am I blessed, grateful, and happy about my surgery, I have a gift to share with others to spread that it's not the easy way out, number one. So let's just get that on the table. By choosing me by choosing health, by choosing life, I chose a surgery to help me, a tool to get me to where I need it to be. And I have so many positive things that I can share with the world. And that's a gift and that's a good thing. And I intend to share that as much as I can. So that good is not being ashamed and being proud of me, my bariatric surgery, my progress, my successes, my determination, my compliance, it's all great. But in Donna's video with her bariatric Be Becky, I'm not like that and I agree with you, Donna. Those kind of people would just, ooh, that would drive me a little crazy too and you're right. You know, especially in a restaurant. Give them your order and zip it. I'm not saying I never said, well, I'm back, I, you know, I had gastric bypass, so I only eat a little bit. Are there smaller portions? And if there's not, that's fine. That's what to-go containers are for. Or you push it over to your husband because, I mean, I in the last three months, we might have gone out to eat once. And that's because we met family. So it's not a, a regular occurrence. But I wasn't contradicting you, Donna. I agree 100% with your bariatric bed. Becky thing. I'm just saying for me, the good is that I have something that I can share and help people. And that's a big part of my YouTube channel. I, I want to be as successful as I can and help as many people as I can along the way. I'm not medically affiliated with anything, but I am a real life human who has and still is living the bariatric life and I will for the rest of my life as it is a life change and a way of life. All right. Another thing is, I don't know if you ever, and I'm sure you have, we all have. I used to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and I'd be hungry for this or hungry for that and I'd eat it and I'd be like, nope, that didn't do it. All right, I'd go out and get something else. Nope, that didn't do it. And I still get like that sometimes, but the beauty of that is, if I get like that, like, maybe I want something crunchy and I'll go out and I'll get a piece of celery. Nope, that didn't do it. Now, of course, I gotta wait a while, because that celery takes a while to go through my pouch. I'm actually full from a piece of celery. Um, then maybe I want a piece of cheese, and then, I don't know, maybe a couple hours later, I'm like, nope, cheese didn't do it. All right, I'll get some nuts. Nope, nuts didn't do it. But the thing is, when I go through that now, my choices are all healthy. My choices are all what I can have. And the beauty and the good of that is, I don't care if I want to eat. I mean, my eyes are still bigger than my stomach. I'll admit it. But I don't care if I want to eat five bites of that 
hamburger with a piece of Swiss on with no bun. Just a nice burger with a piece of Swiss and some mushrooms on. I might want five bites of that because it's oh, so good. But I can only get two, maybe three bites if I'm lucky. That's a good thing in my book. That the surgery is working, the tool is working, everything's going the way it's supposed to go. And that is another good. Um I didn't really write anything else down. I mean, I can I can I can do anything I want to do now. Basically, I'm not sick except for, you know, I'm down with my bipolar more than I'm up. Cuz I have the depressive bipolar. I like manic because manic to me is energy, motivation, but I'm not manic. Hardly ever. Wish I was, but I'm not. Um, but those are my goods and my bads. And luckily for me, and I hope for, you know, like Donna, she, she said she had all good and I'm glad. I wish everybody could have nothing but good. And to those that have had a bad experience post-surgery, my heart goes out to you. I mean, I pray for you. I pray for all of us, but I understand it. You know, it has to not be a good thing to wish you didn't get a surgery that was supposed to change your life for the better. But I would really love if you would take a minute and maybe comment what have your good or bad experiences been post-surgery. If you're pre-op, tell me what your concerns are. Ask me any questions. I'll answer as best as I can. And again, I'm using this platform that YouTube has afforded me to get out and reach as many people as I can from my experience having bariatric surgery. And, you know, the, the community that we build together and the camaraderie and the feedback and the interaction we give with each other, it, we can only help each other. So that's, that's the purpose of all this. And this is number four in my video series of RNY after four years, the good and bad after surgery. Please like, comment, share, and definitely subscribe and hit that little bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. And I want to thank you for being here and being part of my channel. And I look forward to getting to know you and any comments and questions. I'm always, always, always looking at comments and questions. I don't get very many right now, but hopefully that'll change soon. And I can't wait to bring you another video. Thanks so much for stopping in. Talk to you soon.